Hey everybody, welcome to the third annual Mask Alive Festival. As you know, the world has changed in the last few months and we were all ready, we were getting prepared to hold our annual festival in the Pioneer Park in Mesa, but this year is quite different. We had to meet the challenge by going virtual, like virtually everybody else in the world today. We're very fortunate to live in such a diverse community and we celebrate that diversity by showing examples of living forms of culture, music, dance, theater. And today we're celebrating the mask art form and the power of the mask to transform us as individuals to somebody or something else. We have a great show for you today featuring artists from here, local artists from the, from the Phoenix area. We're also going to feature some magnificent mask makers from other parts of the country. And uh, we're going to have a wonderful time. And we're glad you're here. We're glad you're supporting Culture Coalition. We started out the, uh, our celebration today with a video that I put together of some of the masks that I've been fortunate enough to create over the last 30 or 40 years of my career. I've had the wonderful opportunity to live in Japan, in Indonesia, in Mexico. I've had the opportunity to travel in Brazil, to Alaska, to China, and many parts of the world studying the mask art form. What I've done as an artist is try to combine all of these different mask making traditions and come up with a hybrid style of mask, a mask that represents all of us as mankind. So hang in there, check it out. We're going to be back with a lot of wonderful presentations for you to enjoy with your family. Muchas gracias. Take it away.
Hi everybody, thank you for being here with Masca Live. First of all, I want to thank all our sponsors that has helped us financially to pay the artists, pay the production and keep our organization going. So thank you everybody to all our sponsors. I also want to remind you that we still have time for our raffle. We are raffling off this beautiful mask by Sarko Guerrero. I did the beadwork, so that's the first prize. And then also we're raffling off some of my earrings. And the third prize is going to be like a, a swag bag from the Culture Coalition that has books, t-shirts, CDs, stickers. So there's still time to go in our website and buy tickets for the raffle, enter to win. And um, I hope uh, you have fun with today's program, Mask Alive. Thank you. Gracias. Plaso Kamati. Mucho amor te voy a dar. Paleta, paleta de menta y cereza, un peso te vale, un beso te cuesta. Paleta, paleta de menta y cereza, un peso te vale, un beso te cuesta. ¿Qué pasa, raza? Híjole, man, it's good to be here today, eh, check it out, eh, oh. Hey man, you probably don't even recognize me, man. <laughs> hey man, so yo, it's me, el Mato Poeta, your number one Chicano homeboy. Hey. <laughs> hey, I'm so excited to be here today to be able to participate in the Mask Alive virtual celebration. Híjole, man, who would have thought he ever would come to this? Pero sabes qué? Pues aquí estamos y no nos vamos. Eh? <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you a magnificent theatrical production. Una obra de teatro produced by Child's Play Theater for all audiences. Aquí del Valle del Sol. Directed by Rachel Baldwich, Professor of ASU. Written by Jose Cruz Gonzalez, a wonderful, amazing playwright. La música de Daniel Valdez. Fíjate nomás, man, my carnal, Daniel Valdez, un teatro campesino, órale. Yeah, who else am I missing? Oh, yeah. En las máscaras, man, el vato ese, el sarco, man, that vato made a lot of masks for this production. You should see it. Well, you're going to see it. So I want you to check it out. It's a wonderful story. Well, this video tells it all, so I'm not going to take any more time. And without further ado, introducing the Sun Serpent. Plazo Kamati Totatsi Tonatiu!
¡Bienvenidos! It's me, Pepe Pepito, and I'm so glad to be here today to have the honor to introduce our next act from Mask Alive Celebration, Culture Coalition's fantastic celebration of all the different mask traditions that exist in our community here in the Valley of the Sun, here in the Southwest, and featuring other artists from throughout the country. What a thrill! Our next group is called Quetzali, Ballet Folklorico Quetzali. And they've been around for a long time here in the Valley, and they're made up of dozens of wonderful dancers, both young and old, performing dance choreography from throughout Mexico. And I just can't say enough about them because I love them dearly. So please welcome and please enjoy Ballet Folklorico. Que tal? Yay! <laughs> How are you, sweetie? Good, how are you? Okay, do you have any symptoms? The stomach ache, nausea, vomiting? No. Okay, come on in. Thank Welcome, you. sweetie. Hi, Hi. Hi. How are you guys doing? Well, you know, I'm good. How are you guys doing? Good, but these masks, they're getting annoying. I know, quarantine kind of sucks. I'm so excited to be back with dance. Me too. I, I can't wait for the performances. I know, we have a performance today, actually, for Mask Alive. <gasps> Really? Yes, we get to perform. I remember the good old days. <laughs> it's Sally was so fun. Oh, I yes, know. I miss dancing. Me too. But you know what? I think we still got it, right, girl? Oh, yes, oh. we do. I think we should go call up the girls. Get back together. Yo, we can have yeah. another dance. That's a good idea. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 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 oh.
I go to a very unique boutique. <laughs> As a matter of fact, that's what they call a unique boutique. And it's just for people like me who are unique, who are special. Hi everybody, how are you doing today? Welcome once again, welcome back to Mash Alive. I love that, Mask Alive. Oh my God, it sounds so exciting. I'm an aspiring actor and I love math and I love to dance and I love to sing and I love to just do silly stuff. Stop and have fun. <laughs> and I'm having fun today because I've seen so many amazing videos celebrating Culture Coalition Basketball House Celebration. Now, I have to tell you a story. Of course, I'm on Facebook like everybody else. I got a lot of friends on Facebook. But one of my favorites is this gentleman. I've never met him, but he's become so important in my life as a source of inspiration and motivation. His name is Jonathan Chip Becker. And not only is a mash maker, but he's also a teacher, a professor. He has experience. He's traveled extensively. And by looking at his videos, and his post, I see that he's working with some amazing theater and dance companies around the country and uh, different countries even. So, thank you, Culture Coalition, for bringing El Maestro, the master mask maker and teacher, Jonathan Kip Becker. I did it! <laughs> ah, oh, <laughs> did My name is Jonathan Kip Becker, and I've been joyfully solving creative problems for satisfied clients over the past 35 years. I've had the amazing opportunity to travel the globe as a mask maker, sculptor, fight and movement choreographer, movement coach, teaching artist, movement specialist, puppeteer, musician, faux finisher, and historic restorationist. So here's the journey. My journey as a teaching artist has positively affected students and educators at 33 institutions on three continents. My work as a mask maker has provided masks to clients in 50 countries. Those include educators, producing organizations, individual artists, galleries, collectors, DJs, bands, and cosplay aficionados. The masks I've offered are poetic, dynamic, provocative, and inspirational. I think of them as agents that reveal to us who we are in face of the world. One of my most influential teachers once said of the masks, there are three masks. The one we are, the one we wear, and the one we have in common. My work over the years has focused on the aspects of what we have in common. The intent has been to reach, to celebrate the human condition so as to bring people together to form community. And so the endeavors have taken many, many forms. I've performed and toured throughout Asia, Europe and the United States, helped in the creation of 16 new works for the theater, engineered puppets, recreated cosplay characters, fabricated foam costume pieces for marching bands, collaborated in the creation of sets for television and sound stages, designed and executed decorative finishes for living spaces, as well as worked on historic home restoration projects. I have the unique ability to intuit what a client is asking for, even when a client has difficulty articulating exactly what it is that they are after. I approach the work with courage, intelligence, a fearless passion, 
and a great sense of humor. The broad spectrum of activity has required me to constantly reinvent my skill sets. My goal is to find exciting and creative solutions that leave those who work with me and those who encounter the creative work inspired, joyful, and profoundly satisfied with the entire experience. My eclectic creative life adventure has provided me with a unique vision, a large worldview, and a broad skill set for finding solutions and then allowing those solutions to take form. One might say the solutions are constantly facing creativity. Let me help you create something extraordinary. My name is Quetzal Guerrero, also known as Q Violet. I've just played an excerpt of the song called Bones. The chorus of this song states, when I conquer pain, nothing stays the same. All that remains is my bones. In other words, when we're faced with struggles, pain, challenges in this life, it is our spirit that helps us to transcend and find a higher purpose in order to keep on living because after all, our time here is very short. Next, you're going to see the official music video for this song, which features the masks of Sarco Guerrero. Now, not only do these masks help to engage and captivate the audience, but they really help to illustrate that concept of the spirit world and the cycle between life and death. So without further ado, here is our video of Bones. stays the same all that remains is my bones yeah when i conquer pain nothing stays the same all that remains is my bones yeah Long after I'm gone, hope you recite these quotes Life is full of poison, so I wrote this antidote The bones of my brother six feet in the low I'm blessed for everything that you've given me So if you're smart, use a smartphone to set a timer Tell the future that I'm looking forward for tomorrow I got a date with karma, the rapper Dalai Lama Just remember you were thirsty with a glass of lava You could have had the lemonade, you could have had the guava But when the glass is half full, you're looking at the problems Man, she said she really clean, should I wear a condom? Wrap my bones in regret and sell my name around Ransom. Man, she said I'm handsome just to ease the pain And said that all these other brothers, they be acting lame You know there's more to life than getting money and some fame I'd rather paint this legacy with the blood in my veins uh. When I conquer pain, nothing stays the same Got an 
enemy trying to hold back my legacy and in her belly i'm betting for future pregnancy and i don't care what society always telling me because it was never into it my people melody and i've been fighting and climbing for opportunity the devil looking and walking and he pursuing me but he ain't messing the energy and the cool in me so pardon me for writing you a motherfucking eulogy and i ain't got no regrets for where i'm soon to be i'm just trying to fill up every chapter in my story g honestly i'm just trying to show you what's inside of me even though my guts are full of rust and that the irony i ain't trying to take to the grave all this money i just want my name to remain with the holy so don't act like you've seen a ghost here homie because when you greet my bones you'll finally get to know me ah. the ancestors know all that i carry in my bones and after this life of strife i'm gonna return home And when it's all over, the weight is off my shoulders It's just my bones that beat, let my soul free When I conquer pain, nothing stays the same Celebrate the mask alive. What? <laughs> Man, I can't hear myself. I'm muddling here with this uh, mask on. So let me take it off. Yeah, there you go. All right. You know, I got to wear my mask. I do every time I go out. I want to make sure I'm doing what has to be done. That's right. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I love Mask Alive. I love this festival. I've been to the other celebrations held out there in Mesa. And uh, it's one of the favorite things that I was doing for a while, is just going out there to the park and celebrating with all these magnificent artists. And it's the mask and the power to transform that fascinates me. You know what I'm talking about. I know that. This next act, his name, this gentleman's name, Kenny Perez. And he's from Phoenix, but he's traveled in Japan and throughout China for the last 40 years, you believe that? Studying the art and culture of Asia, particularly China, and the art of Kung Fu. So check out this Chinese opera piece done by none other than Jenny Perez. Take it away! Thank you. 
Hello everybody, thank you for being here. Thank you for our sponsors for making Mask Alive possible. How's your mask? Have you made a mask lately? Anyway, I wanted to remind you that there's still time to buy tickets for our raffle. We have this beautiful mask over here carved in mahogany by Mr. Sarko Guerrero and I did the bead work, that's the first prize. And then I also have some earrings here from Carmen Creations. And the third prize will be uh, a swag bag by the Culture Coalition, which includes a t-shirts and a book and other goodies. So thank you for being part of our audience. Thank you for all our sponsors for helping us keep, keep the coalition alive and all the artists engaged. And uh, please say hello and say a like to us and buy your tickets. And thank you for being here for Mask Alive. Well, thank you. I'm very glad to be here today. Uh, be part of a uh, uh, mask alive celebration. Uh, I I brought my mask, and uh, I I'm trying to be a good citizen. I I, I don't want to get anybody sick, and I certainly don't want to get sick myself. <laughs> so anyway, I. You can see I'm a smoker. I try to hide. I try to quit, but I just can't. <coughs> now I go to theater. I love theater. I love to support it. <coughs> well, I used to be an actor myself <laughs> back in my younger days. <laughs> I was like one of them Kirk Douglas kind of guy. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe, but what the heck. Anyway, I had the most pleasure to meet this young man in Tucson. When I went there to volunteer, they were developing a, a beautiful, wonderful uh, theatrical production called Barrio Stories. And I met this young man named Eli Renteria, and this guy was a clown. <laughs> I mean, literally, he was a clown. Very talented young man. Hey, Eli, I say Culture Coalition, Mask of Life Celebration asked me, gave me the honor of introducing Eli Renteria and his take on mass media. <coughs> so let's check it out. <coughs> All right, now how do I do this? I hope. <coughs> Hi. My name is Elijah Renteria, and I'm an artist from Tucson, Arizona. I became fascinated with the mask when I was in high school. I had the opportunity to make a Comedia mask for a play in high school, I think my junior or senior year, and that was the first mask that I ever made. I remember um, putting it on for the first time and feeling totally overcome and taken with the character that I created and I never felt that way before just doing plays and just performing um, and ever since then I've never really stopped performing in mask I always feel the freest when I'm working in mask I think my masks generally fall into two categories performance masks and like uh, art masks really um, my performance masks I make them thinking about how they're going to be played on stage, how someone is going to wear them, and that really influences what they end up looking like. Um, they're much more like characters, they're much more like people or monsters or things from dreams, from, from myths and fairy tales, while uh, the other masks, the art masks I make, are much more striking. They, uh, they're made to look much more like they're supposed to be on the wall. Um, I often make them look as if they've been carved out of wood or as if they've been made from jade or some material, metal. Um, something that makes them uh, become a little more than just uh, clay and paint. Because uh, they're supposed to be looked at and um, you know, hung on the wall as a piece of art. But even those are still meant to be worn in some way. Like they're still not really complete until they're 
on a person. Well, there's just something so transformative about the human body as it interacts with the mass. That's what makes mass so special to me. Other things you know, don't really have that same quality. Uh, like if I were to have a perfect show, I'd, I'd have, uh, instead of the mask hung on the wall, I'd have all my masks worn by people from all over the world, from all these different places. People are part of the art too. A lot of my inspiration comes from nature, from the, from the natural world around me, but also I take a lot of inspiration from the people around me. You know, I look at faces, wherever I go, I find myself you know, looking at noses, at, at eyebrows, and seeing how can that inform the work that I do? How can I make the masks that I make more realistic? If you look at your own face in the mirror, your nose is not quite the same on both sides. Your eyes are a little bit different uh, heights. And so my masks often reflect that reality, I think. I think there's beauty in that, and not striving to make everything perfect and unnatural, but, but to put the asymmetry into my work is a purposeful thing that I do. Because um, I think the faces I see around me are beautiful and I want to see that reflected in the work that I do, even if they're representations of, of gods or, or monsters or birds or whatever. Celebrate the Mask Alive Festival of Culture Coalition. Qué bonito, verdad? Mira, I, I, I don't know about you. I want, I, you know, I believe we have to wear the mask, the mask, you know, when we go out like in public and stuff, you know, so that we don't cough all over everybody and we don't sneeze all over everybody. You have to pray if you're gonna pray. You pray for everybody, okay? Everybody deserves to be appreciated. Everybody, every one of us needs healing. And that's why today we're celebrating the Mask Alive Festival. Porque estamos celebrando la cultura. We're celebrating culture. We're celebrating traditions. And we keep the arts alive in our community so everybody can come together, we can dance, and we can see. Oh! I have so much fun in Las Fiestas, and this is a virtual fiesta. I do? What is that? I don't know, but I'm finding out pretty soon. So, the first act I want to introduce to you is a belly dancing group. And wait till you see them. Because I don't know a lot about belly dancing because, you know, I was always like a flamenco dancer and ballet folklorico. But I always wanted to be a belly dancer. And when I was younger, I used to have like a, like a big belly, you know? And everything, I was like a gorda, you know? But I lost all my weight, so pretty so me no tengo nada, pues. But that's okay. I may not be the most beautiful woman in the world, but sabes que? I love who I am. I don't care if I'm old and wrinkled up. Who cares? This is my mascara. This is the face that I was given. So everybody, here we go for the, for the belly dancing group. Fazily, híjole.
Hi everybody, thank you for being here with Masca Live. First of all, I want to thank all our sponsors that has helped us financially to pay the artists, pay the production and keep our organization going. So thank you everybody to all our sponsors. I also want to remind you that we still have time for our raffle. We are raffling off this beautiful mask by Sarko Guerrero. I did the beadwork, so that's the first prize. And then also we're raffling off some of my earrings. And the third prize is going to be like a, a swag bag from the Culture Coalition that has books, t-shirts, CDs, stickers. So there's still time to go in our website and buy tickets for the raffle, enter to win. And um, I hope uh, you have fun with today's program, Mask Alive. Thank you. Gracias. Tlasoca Mati. having such a good time, aren't you? So many wonderful performers. I love the dancing. I love the mascaras, everything. It's so fascinating, verdad? Híjole, que bueno. I'm having so much fun. And now I want to present, present to you, introduce to you another group that has been working with Culture Coalition for years. The name of this dance company is called Olin Yolitli. Oh, that's a word in the Nahuatl language, the ancient language of the Aztecs and many of the other indigenous people throughout Mexico and even here in the Southwest. The Nahuatl language is coming back. It's experiencing a rebirth. And that's why we have so many groups who now use the Nahuatl language to name their groups. For example, Olin Yolitli means Olin is movements, and Yolitli, el corazón, the movement of the heart or life itself. This group is made up of all different age groups of kids and young adults, and not so young adults like myself, también. <laughs> Los queremos mucho. Ladies and gentlemen, let's check it out. Olin, Yolitli, Thank you for joining us. My name is Valentino. My name is Hector. And today we're bringing you a special episode from our Folklorical TV series for the Mask Alive Festival. In this episode, you will see our students dancing, singing, and playing music with our instruments. Let's go. Thank you. 
that was a great performance. I really enjoyed it and I hope that you guys liked it too. That was our academic artists. They work really hard and I couldn't have been any more proud of them. Next, we have our little ones performing two dances. One which is from the state of Michoacán called, called El Gusanito. And El Son de Yerba Buena from Veracruz. We'll be right back. celebration of Mask Alive. I'm very honored to be here today to introduce to you our next performer and this very hard-hitting and deep expression of what's going on today on this continent, the migration of indigenous people from north to south. This migration, the act of migrating, is an act of humanity. And today, here in the southwestern United States, every day we receive our brothers, our cousins from Mexico and further south who are making their migrations north in the same way, in many cases, as their ancestors once did in search of a better life. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you a piece entitled Mask Migration by the Maestra Felipa Lerma.
<laughs> hey, John, my feet, brother, what love, all right, hey, hey, hey. Wow. <laughs> everybody called me the Rasta Man Ja. <laughs> hey, I'm so excited to be here today to introduce the next mask maker who we're featuring tonight. On Mask Alive. And his name is Eric Bornstein. This gentleman is a fine artist. And like Jonathan Kip Baker, also a wonderful teacher and mentor to many people throughout the world. <laughs> he went on a special mission to Jamaica to make some giant effigy heads of heroes of Jamaican history. And that's why I'm very proud to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, Eric Barstein, all right, y'all love me. Hello, my name is Eric Bornstein. I'm a mask maker, and I've been a mask maker for 35 years. Uh, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, US of A, and I'm here in Jamaica on a Fulbright grant to reinvigorate and revive the art of effigy making. Effigies are giant representations, usually in paper mache, of famous characters that are used to, for community ritual, to bring out for special occasions so that you can reflect on and celebrate the heroes of your culture. Uh, I've been making masks for a long time and I've been making giant masks and typically it's, it's been villains. Uh, for the last several years I've worked with an Iranian human rights group making giant masks of Ayatollah Khamenei and President Rouhani that were performed uh, regularly at the Dog Hammer School Plaza at the United Nations in New York, but to show the terrible things happening in their country and their leadership. So I was crying out to the universe, I want to create the heroes. I want to, I want to make giant masks of the, the personalities, the characters that we celebrate that show the best of what we have to offer as human beings and not the worst. And you know what? The next day I get a phone call, actually an email from the Ministry of Culture uh, Mr. Salmon uh, asked me to make the effigies of the heroes of Jamaica and after months of conversations I began the work and created the Marcus Garvey uh, last, last December and shipped it over and uh, over the next several months we worked through the American Embassy and the Ministry and the JCDC to, to bring me over here and to assemble a team of young Jamaican artists that could carry on this, uh, this art. So the Effigy Revival Project is to, well, as I said, to revive and reinvigorate the art. So what, what it takes to do that is to create a whole new tradition, a visual art tradition here in Jamaica with Jamaican artists uh, fueling this revolution in the arts here in Jamaica. Uh, there hasn't been a focus on the visual arts here for quite some time. And so what I'm hoping to do is to kickstart the process I built three giant armatures, which allow you to make the effigies. You can't really make them in the same way. And so those will be here, and that, those will live here, and they can be the beginning of, of hundreds of new effigies. So an armature is the architecture that's under, well, you'll see the heavy clay. There's, there's 1,000 pounds of clay that was used here. But underneath that, is a considerable structure that begins with uh, thick plywood, two by fours. It's a whole architecture, and then we build up the general shape of a head and the shoulders. Over that, we pack the clay. So the clay is really, even a thousand pounds of clay is just the thin uh, coating over the armature. 
but it gives you the base to do that. You couldn't build these with just clay. It would be, right, you could imagine. So having that armature, I don't even have armatures this good in my own studio at home. I don't have the room. And so over here, you have three of them. So that means that these artists and future Jamaican artists that hear about this, hopefully through this broadcast, through this documentary, uh, are attracted to this, this art and think, wow, what a great way to make very public art and celebrate my culture. I'm here trying, doing the Usain Bolt. Got involved in this program by a friend which introduced me and I came by. It's actually a great project, you know what I mean? I've learned a lot in which I didn't know and so forth. Now I'm here trying to get Usain Bolt to perfection by the end of the day. So you know, he's a fast man. So I've been a fast worker too. Typically, when I work on these at home, it takes one month to do each one. What we've done here, right now we're five weeks in, we have eight of these going, eight. And we have, most of them are, are within days of being finished. It begins with studying, studying the characters. So for me, it means I, I look for photographs, I. Uh, Google information, I read about the characters, I get a sense of who they are as human beings, as, as people, as cultural, like why are they political heroes, why, uh, why are they cultural icons? And I read about them so I get a sense of who they are as people uh, and historically what they've accomplished. I begin to draw them, I find the most iconic images, for example Marcus Garvey, well you don't want to make Marcus Garvey without the blue hat with the white feather because no one will know who it is. Right, because that's the image that's in people's minds for Marcus Garvey. And so the same thing with, with some of the characters, you don't have, it's not, you don't have quite something like that, but there's always something similar that identifies them uh, in an iconic image. This part I'm doing is is providing the the, the, the um the the structure the framework for, for for this piece to be worn by 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 the person who will be modeling it um, because of the size of it we need to we need to create a structure where where it where it is trapped to the body so that if breeze or just just the general moving around it doesn't fall off and get damaged. my goal is to really get to know them because then we begin to sculpt and sculpting is 360 degrees it's in uh, three dimensions so we have to work from all different angles we stand up on ladders we stand way back at the room we we dip down to the floor and look up so we have to have it be right from every angle because when they're moving around on the streets and the crowd everybody sees them from all different angles we want them to be alive from all those angles so we sculpt them and it takes several days to, to do the sculpture. After that, to prepare for the paper mache, which we layer on over the clay, we have to provide a barrier between the clay and the paper. So we have to put plastic wrap all around very, very carefully so that we don't obscure the details. Then the paper mache presses in. We have to be very careful. We're using very small pieces of paper and covering everything over. It, can, it takes a long, long time. They'll, they'll tell you and a lot of care. Every single piece of paper out of every, those thousands and thousands of pieces of paper, everyone has to be put on with care. After the effigies leave the studio, that's when they begin their actual life. What you're getting here is behind the scenes. This is the making of. But their real life begins when they leave the studio. 
These will be owned by the Ministry of Culture and the JCDC, so they'll store them. They'll be, there's stands that we've built for them. There'll prob probably be new stands built for them. There's some talk of housing them permanently at the National Gallery of Art, where they'd be in temperature control and on stands, and that they would last forever if they get to live in that type of environment when they're not being used. In any event, I know the National Gallery will do an exhibit of them at some point, and we're really hoping that they're stored in, a, in a, a great place where the public can view them at any time. This is just the beginning, that we're doing this, this enormous push to get all of these 10 pieces out this time, but that every year now they'll have a year to produce three new characters so that, for instance, when you go to the National Celebration with your children, that every year it's like, ooh, look who's, look who's being presented and that every year that's a tradition that you look forward to seeing who are the new effigies. And like I said, these are the artists that are making this happen. Because I won't be here, but they now know how to build these. And hopefully this will attract and uh, inspire more Jamaican artists to become involved with this project. I'm hoping this becomes something that's significant here. And uh, my thanks to the ministry and to the JCDC for helping to facilitate this, and also the American Embassy, for making this happen. Welcome back to Max Alive, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Desert Dance Theater in their production of Junk Funk, featuring Step Raptus and Lisa Chow, and also the mask that they use, the Calaca mask for their Dia de los Muertos celebration. So, please help me welcome Desert Dance Theater. Hi, I'm Step Raptus. And I'm Lisa Chow. Today we're going to perform some Steps Junk Funk. We're going to do some percussion and dance using the 33 gallon containers, plastic, and we're going to do a piece called Step Boom Bop. Step Boom Bop.
All right, once again, welcome back to Mask Alive. We're coming to an end of our virtual celebration of this magnificent mask celebration and festival. And at this time, we'd like to introduce QVLN, a.k.a. Quetzal Guerrero, and his new production of Ancestral. Take it away, Q. High five. High five. High five.
messy, 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 Right. Thank you. I want to tell everybody from the bottom of my heart how much we appreciate you coming today, taking part in our celebration of Mask Alive, our third annual, but our first virtual celebration. We're very grateful to Culture Coalition, to the staff, and to the board of directors who work so hard throughout the year to make all our festivals, Mask Alive, Puente, the Miquisli de los Muertos celebration possible to bring all this vibrant, beautiful culture to you and to our community. We're also very grateful and appreciative of all the artists who joined us today with their music, their dance, their knowledge, their wisdom, and the power of culture that they've shared with us through their particular art forms. So, muchas gracias, Tlaso Kamati. Coming up next, Mikishli. La Dia de los Muertos celebration. So join us. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego.